das nicht gelegt, aber das, was heute vor uns steht, Do not let us speak of darker days. Let us speak rather of sterner days. These are not dark days. These are great days. The greatest our country has ever lived. And we must all thank God that we have been allowed, each of us, according to our station, to play a part in making these days memorable in the history of our race. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note, stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received, and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. At war with Germany. The sombre broadcast of Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain on the 3rd of September 1939 marked the start of what was to be the most wide-ranging conflict in human history and one that would be fought in the very streets of Coventry. This is the moving story of the ordinary people who fought the war on the home front and a celebration of the spirit and determination that saw them emerge united and victorious. The Blitz had begun. Bombing from the air was still a new and terrifying phenomenon. No British city had been systematically destroyed until the 14th of November. In the biggest raid to date, 500 Nazi planes attacked Coventry, deep in the heart of England. Devastating bombs were dropped on innocent families. We were all carrying on the floor and screaming. More than in any other recent conflict, the Second World War brought misery not just to the armed combatants, but also to civilian populations. And among those that suffered most were the people of Coventry. Their city was the target of bombing raids throughout the war, but November 1940, known as the Coventry Blitz, saw attacks of the greatest ferocity, leading to the highest casualties. The German code name for the attack was Moonlight Sonata. This was chosen because the raids were planned for clear, moonlit nights that would give the bombers best visibility for finding their targets and at the same time minimize the threat from British fighter planes and anti-aircraft fire. The worst night, the 14th of November, was clear and with a full moon. Ideal conditions for the 449 bombers that according to the Nazi claims dropped 30,000 incendiaries and 500 tons of high explosives onto Coventry. On that night, over 500 civilians died the exact figures will never be known, as many bodies could not be recovered from the remains of the...
That grand old parish church, with its tower and spire soaring to the sky and its huge, immense, majestic building. We've all simply loved it. Everybody's loved it. Not only church people, but everybody. It's been part of us. Up on the top roof and the lower roofs and the ground floor, we waited. And then bomb after bomb, incendiary bomb, fell. And we, we fought them with what we could, and the equipment we had, one after the other. It took a long time. And then, finally, a group of three fell on the roof, and, well, the fire blazed up, and we had no more sand and no more water, and practically no more strength to go on. And the fire got a big hold. The fire station came, but, um, well, there was no not sufficient water to deal with it, and the fire got a complete grip of the roof and burnt from roof to roof, and all the pews blazed up, a great inferno inside. I think we all tried to do our best. Uh, the fire service was simply magnificent. Uh, by about 1.30, the whole thing was gutted, the pillars in the middle, and the great grand arcade fell down, and the nave of the cathedral was no more. Uh, all through that night, the, the clock serenely struck the hours. And many people far and wide thought that the cathedral was all right. But there, there it is. That night, the city burnt. And the mother church of the city burnt with her. Can't you have a feeling that's a sort of emblem of the eternal truth that when men suffer, God suffers with them? And yet the tower and the spire still stand, soaring to the sky, and I feel that's an emblem of the eternal majesty and love of God. It was the spirit of our forefathers that built that grand building. I believe that that spirit is with us still and will help us to, to rebuild it one day when we've served and suffered a while, a little longer. Build it again to the, to the glory of, of Jesus Christ. Flying squad is on the road, on the road to Coventry after the recent heavy raids on that gallant city. The mobile canteens presented by Her Majesty the Queen and by friends in America race to the scene of devastation to relieve the distress of those who have lost their homes. This is total war. The fair land of Britain, her gracious cities and her green countryside are now a battleground. We have lately suffered some reverses, but look at these pictures of the people who have just come through the terrible ordeal of fierce bombardment. They show that the spirit that sustained these islands under the autumn blitz is still imperishable. What have you got, lady? Soup, soup, cheese, sandwiches, buns. I bet you ain't got no onions, have you? Yes. Yes, while we can still joke about our troubles, we're still on the road to victory. <laughs> I want to remind you about how very important it is that all water shall be boiled before being used in Coventry. No matter where you get that water from, whether it's out of a tap or anywhere else, will you please see that it is boiled before it is used? Now, secondly, the, another announcement from the Ministry of Health. Will you please make quite certain that you don't use any WCs or, or drains that are not working? Please dig a hole in your garden and get rid of the refuse there.